Nick, we have a comment here that says, um, now I don't know if you've ever done this, just as a disclaimer, but does anyone else who has blown an account feel that they could have done much better if they just traded with, with their eyes closed? Oh my gosh, is that actually a comment? <laughs> it's actually a comment. <laughs> Thoughts? Buy, sell, <laughs> buy. So, what's going on? What's up, dude? So yeah, we're um, here in the office. Thanks to uh, quarantine, we were out of here for a few months, but we are back to normal, back to, to hanging out in the office and just been in here doing a little bit of trading, do a little bit of web development. There's endless problems to solve there. But I'm also keeping an eye on my trades here. Right now I've got uh, a GBP USD trade uh, that I'm watching. I'll switch it over to the one hour chart. Looks a little bit chaotic, but if we kind of break it down here, basically, I've been watching for this thing to to continue to roll over. With everything fundamental that's going on, we've got just had the pandemic, as I mentioned, and things are a little bit shaky. There's a lot of on-edge news coming out. Some bullish and causing the market to fly, and then causing the market to fall too. But when we take a look at GBP USD, a lot of times pound dollar actually moves up when the US stock market goes up, and a lot of times it goes down with the stock market recently. Actually, let me show you guys one thing: correlation coefficient. That's it. So if we get a correlation coefficient and we actually throw up here SPX 500, this is the S&P 500. So when we apply that, what you'll notice here is take a look. So this little bar at the bottom, this is showing us how correlated the GBP USD, the current chart where you're on, is compared to the S&P 500. And what you'll notice is that when it gets closer to one, that means that these two things are moving very close to each other. So you can actually see that we have quite a close reading to one a lot of the time. And so, especially recently, we've seen a very high correlation. So as the pound dollar is falling, so is the S&P 500 and so vice versa. When the S&P rises, we also see the pound dollar rising. And so recently we've actually caught some of the down Side. We've caught some of the movement. We saw the big uh, downside. We're seeing price respected overall. And I'm looking to see if we can get lower. We just broke through uh, here in the New York session. We broke through some of this support level, which is now, I re-highlighted it as pink, um, showing that's now resistance. And I'm looking to see if we can get ourselves down to uh, this area here in green, which is basically right around that 1.25 level. Looking to see if we can get down to that point. And if so, I've got targets down a little bit further. So we'll see if we can get down to that point. Frank is actually hard at work here. No donuts this time. Frank is hard at work today. Oh, yes, I am. There you go. Uh, Some about IQ. They IQ. jump almost 40%. What is IQ? Yesterday. They're like the Netflix streaming service of China. Oh, really? So oh, that. Really All right. Big news, though. There's some Where's gems for y'all for a stock to look at. So we have photographer Julie now. <laughs> and. We're gonna be filming some cutouts uh, for YouTube. Fresh thumbnail pictures. Yeah. I'll just show y'all what they set up real quick. All right, y'all, so if you look here, we're gonna get a new thumbnail cutouts. And they were laughing at my my pizza. I think that's it. <laughs> I mean, it, it, just, it just looks very cramped in there. You know? I know, it does. <laughs> oh, that is good. Y'all, so I was talking to Nick. So we're gonna do a little segment here. I'm gonna go through some old YouTube videos and find some hilarious comments like about trading or things new traders say. It will be a variety, and I'm just gonna see how Nick reacts to it. So here we go. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> All right, Nick, what do you think about this comment here? How in the world do you get nine thumbs down for this? That blows my mind. Keep it up, bud. This is from the Forex Traders Give Back, handing out donuts in Atlanta. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. he got a reply, this guy who commented it, and the reply is, he's just doing it for YouTube. <laughs> I, I actually saw that comment, and when I saw that, I was like, if we were just doing it for YouTube, we probably would have done something more on topic, because that video actually did very not great in terms of analytics. Uh, but uh, yeah, no. Nine dislikes was too many. We were handing out free donuts. I actually made a video at one point recently talking about how you could probably hand out free stuff on the road and people would still find ways to get mad at you. And uh, there's a there's a testament right there. There's an example. We handed out free donuts. And we actually got some comments too that were like, why are you handing out donuts? Donuts are like gonna cause people to have health problems and all this. And it's like, we were, t we were laughing about it in the office. We are like, would you rather us hand out apples or broccoli because I feel like people would just be freaked out even more if we did that. <laughs>
<laughs> okay, Nick, we got another comment here. Yeah. Just want to get your thoughts. How do I get a reliable expert professional that can help me recover my losses? Oh my gosh. Is that one of those scam comments? I think so. Pro probably. If you guys see those comments and it's like, um, you know, thanks to Charles something, some super stock photo name, <laughs> don't go clicking their link. Don't contact them on Telegram or WhatsApp. It's complete scam garbage. It's not real. <laughs> okay, this comment came on exposing the truth about Forex trading. The truth is that the brokers are the scammers. Thoughts about that? The brokers are the scammers. Well, that's actually maybe a fair comment, kind of, because some brokers might be pretty scammy. I think the big thing there is just check if they're regulated or not. If a broker is heavily regulated, usually they are not scamming everybody. Maybe there's stuff that I don't know, but a lot of times, I will say, a lot of times new traders, they love to blame the broker for all of their issues. They're like, man, I, I, I can't come up with a trading strategy. That's the broker's fault. Or, uh, you know, I, I can't handle my emotions. That's the broker's fault, right? They, they come up with any reason they can to blame the broker as to why their stock got hit. And I think that that's a losing game. I think that blaming the broker for everything is a tough way to go through trading. Look for a regulated broker. Stick to brokers that are legit and don't play around with, with you know, scammy ones and then you won't have that problem. Nick, we have a comment here that says, um, now I don't know if you've ever done this, just as a disclaimer, but does anyone else who has blown an account feel that they could have done much better if they just traded with, with their eyes closed? Oh my gosh, is that actually a comment? <laughs> it's actually a comment. <laughs> Thoughts? Buy, sell, <laughs> buy, sell. Dude, there's, well, maybe for some people, I don't know. Maybe, maybe for some people. New, new trader, new trader me probably would have been better off just closing my eyes and clicking a button. <laughs> <laughs> As y'all can see, remember when I said Frank was working moments ago? Yeah, I remember. <laughs> he did that just for the camera. <laughs> so now we'll see if he can solve it. Did you hear that, Frank? Without cheating. <laughs> How to solve Rubik's Cube. <laughs> All right, Nick. Where is your My FX book now? You blew it up. Good job. <laughs> you blew it up. Good job. Really? Yeah. Uh, you can still find it on the website. It's uh, a1trading.com slash track record, something like that. Still on the site. Don't know what this person's talking Good about. Good job. Good job. You blew your account. <laughs> wait, so, so, wait, say that again? I said uh, I locked in 103 pips, so I figured that would be making people happy. Profit. Yeah, so but you... If it runs, then like, yeah, please run. Yeah, like, I think that's probably one of the best situations that you can be in as a trader is like you've you've locked in that profit but here's the thing frank the the question becomes do you cut your target off of this trade do you cut the head off like do you, do you basically just say this thing is going for everything it's worth and i'm just trailing it in or do you still like hold hold your target and say i'm either taking a trailing stop or a target which one do you usually do uh usually trailing stop with with a hard target as well yeah so okay. like if it hits the level i'll just close it like manually Got but it. if if not then i'll just lock in my profit Got so it. it's, it's a win-win but it just depends on which win can be bigger gotcha yeah no i mean that's like literally the best the best situation you can be in is when you've locked in you said you locked in 100 pips or so, and you're just sitting there letting it run. That's the best. So my first trade, or my second trade is up 313. First trade is up 90. So that's about $400 in profit right now. If we get down to another, that's probably 550 in profit. That'd be really nice. Your target was, what was your number again for GBP USD? My TP was, uh, it was 1.23678. Okay, yeah, we got targets just right around the same area. So you're here. I'm pulling it up on the chart because I want to see. Yeah, so your zone is pretty much the same as mine. I love that. I can't believe we're, we took like the same trade. I didn't, I didn't, I saw that you were trading pound dollar in the, in the chat room, but I didn't know you were, like your trade setup was very similar. I think you were, you got in like at a better price. I kind of got in a little late, I think. Well, I took, I took two positions on this because I, my first one was early. I was early on the first trade, but the second one was pretty decent. So now I'm just trying to see if we'll play it out, but yeah, I mean, the, the trend definitely switched in our favor. So just trying to see if we can let this thing run. Man, I'm looking at the minute chart on pound dollar. 
Yeah. And it is just respecting every little every resistance. pullback. Yeah. It's like steps. Something. I mean, this is just a sell day. I love I love these kind of days because when it's moving like this, it's just like the direction is clear, and when you're on the right direction, it's beautiful. We'll see how it closes out for the rest of the day though. 15 minute chart looks so bearish. You can see like the 15 minute chart. If you go to the 15 minute chart, there's this one candle, four or five candles back. It tried to jump up and it came right to a resistance level and just fell from there so nicely. Yeah, you I see, see that? It. Yeah, came up right there and just pegged it and fell back down. I love that. See the latest top, a couple, like five candles back. Yep, on the 15 minute? It's, yeah, it's, or on the one minute. On the one minute, okay. So it's you're really trying like on this guy. right on that resistance line, so. What's the, what's the price? Change. What is your price for the resistance, or the, um, for the stop? 1.24225. Two, two, okay, yeah, so you're, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So your stop is right there above that structure. Look at that one minute still holding for now. This thing is really trading today. Like it's really volatile. Yeah. Oh, look at the five minute. You see that pips, dropping? Dude. 103 pips. That's a good move for the day. Look at that back down to the lows. That five minute like popped up and just went bop right back down. <laughs> I waited two weeks for this. I know this was, this was a slow one. This thing was just chopping for, for days. I'm looking at the one hour chart and just seeing back and forth, back and forth. Man, is this thing really gonna pop down and hit my target today? That would be amazing. Man, it feels good to be on the right side. I know, we've, we've had a couple losses this week, so this is good. Anymore. Lately, Thursdays are a way for myself to catch up on some of my trades and journaling, uh, and just trying to focus a little bit more on being inside the group, hanging out with members. With everything that's going on, we've re recently hired a writer. We've uh, been publishing more content out on the internet. We do all sorts of work for brokers and partnerships. So we've just gotten extremely busy, but at my core, I am still a trader. I'm still an investor. I run a business, but it doesn't matter. I actually really like this point. Um, someone, someone actually brought this up to me. They said, it doesn't matter how much money you actually have or make, because if you know how to trade and invest that money, you can multiply it. And that's a really, really cool fact that, you know, I, I've, of course, I've thought about it similarly, but never in those words. It's a, it's a multiplier of your money. And a lot of you guys out there, you're doing other things, right? You're, you're not just trading and investing. You're doing, you know, you've got a small business or you work a, a full-time job or, you know, you've just got other sources of income and trading is a way to take that income that you're making and multiply it if you know what you're doing. And that's the most beautiful thing about trading, in my opinion, is doing this for life and building up that wealth over many, many years that's where you're gonna really see some of the life-changing gains, right? A lot of times people talk about it doing it in like a week, but they don't show the many accounts that they're blowing and, and problems that they're having by trying to get rich quick. But if you do this slow and steady, I'm telling you, this is the beauty of it. This is the way that I approach trading. This is a game where we're trying to make money, not now and today, we're trying to make money you know, consistently over time and to build accounts and to multiply it. So that's the word of the day, multiplying, yeah, multiplying your money. That's the, the key way to look at trading. It's not to, at least in my opinion, it's not a way to make big riches. It's a way to take money that you're making and multiply it and build it and get bigger. So excuse the the uh, the sleeping or the, the pajama shirt. I'm just uh, working from home today, like I said, just doing my thing. So I'm sure I'll be back soon with an update for you guys.